another day, another challenge in the workshop again on the hybrid and electric cars. Uh, this time we have another brand that we didn't have so far to film. It's a Porsche, Panamera. It's in red color actually, which looks good. Generation 2. It's not a full electric, it is a hybrid with a bit of a damage which in theory should not have anything to do with what we do because uh, we don't do body work but he ended up here because he's been broken down right on the moment of the damage what it is a bit of damage sustained in him. from that door the airbags several airbags been deployed but that's not the only thing we have a crash data into the system and vehicle completely shut down no longer starts so it was quite a situation because literally broke down in the middle of the road because of it um yeah quite quite tricky considering it's just um just a door but um, that's how the safety uh, works on electric or hybrid cars everything goes, uh, gets shut off automatically to prevent um, any uh, explosion or um, short circuit um, obviously and, and get more damage so the only he rolls in only by pushing it let's see how we're gonna get to roll by itself welcome to OGS Mechanics I'm George and here we fix cars electric cars hybrid combustion engine cars follow me for interesting repairs translated in video the conclusion was that a high voltage battery has to come in as we do suspect um, a pyrotechnic fuse has exploded in the battery and that's why we cannot clear some error codes although some they were resetting with the diagnostic machine but there's still something that we cannot get rid of and here is the battery quite a big thing not as big as on electric um, located under the boot floor of the car um, in, the, in the back of it and the plan is to put it on a, on a bench and strip it somewhere inside we should have uh, we should find the parafuse are we ready let's yeah. take it on the bench okay a heavy thing we are ready to take off the cover and hopefully we're gonna reveal the pyrofuse which side we expect it to be just will it be can it be the other side because i can see this connector being there Don't see? yeah no idea probably just one way to find out two six Okay, okay, so he could actually be the other side. Yeah, so in here we have just the cells. Probably we're gonna have how many? Eight cells, I would, eight packs. Yeah, because four in here, four. So I think we have to probably uh, put it here and turn it around. Look in here. No. Have a look in here because this is a quite important we we will address this so this seal is about to fail now when this is going to fail completely what is going to happen moisture is going to go inside the battery and from there is only this much until the batteries fail so it's good actually that we take this cover off because we're going to seal it properly we're going to clean all the oxide and then um, seal it again because things like that see here is the beginning of the seal failing and moisture getting into the battery and that's the last thing that you want to see moisture in the high voltage battery but for now we're going to turn the battery the other way because we need to get to our problem first of all we have to have the car running but before we're going to put the battery back we're going to seal it uh, properly also this battery is located at the back of the car right underneath so quite exposed to a lot of moisture um, you know water on the road and, and so on so very important that this is perfectly sealed
this is the high voltage battery control unit which for now we're going to keep on the side um, might need to get into it we don't know yet at the moment we want to have the battery the other way um, okay So looking at the way the battery is built, we should be able, before we take the cover off, to understand whether the pyrofuse that we believe it has is going to be in the battery or in the battery control unit um, where this should also have the, the safety box, the relays. Now, having those two pins here makes me think we're going to have live voltage in here and before we're going to take the cover off we're going to take it anyway only because we've seen that um, seal failure we can do a measurement to see if we can reach deep enough there we see want to see if we have any if we read voltage in here So 376 volts. With this measurement, we prove there's no um, safety fire fuse in here. So the battery, it's putting out um, um, current here. So the, the circuit is not interrupted. So if there is to be anything, it's going to be in here. For that, we, we will remove the cover in here to see what... Uh, we can do not really sure if it's serviceable if it's anything that we can do maybe uh, end up we replace no idea but we don't have anything in the battery itself can we if since we disconnect it let's have the cover off anyway i'm pretty sure we're gonna have same issue with the corrosion and have a look yeah I mean, this is uh, for the current. Try to not to damage the seal as much as possible. But have a look in look in what many places the seal has started to fail, and this is just like a a problem waiting to appear. Have a look all over. So it's good that we've got to this stage because we're gonna clean. And we can see so many places, and this is where um, water moisture is going to get inside the battery and eventually causing an isolation fault, which is not our concern at the moment, but we're going to rectify this also. So anything else that we see in here? Oh no, it's just a stamp. Okie dokie. And here is the plug for the um, sleeves that are reading the... Uh, voltages and probably the temperature of the battery our problem now gets directed towards this so let's have the cover on for now here until we come to this so not finding the pyrofuse uh, within the high voltage battery uh, what we've done because we were there we'd um, isolate um, the cover because it was corrosion and it was a very important aspect that we've done it at this stage at least we prevent um, future failures of the battery because of moisture getting into the battery and now we are ready to connect the battery back on the car um, quite a heavy thing we have it on the gearbox jack and we're gonna start lowering the car to put the battery in situ it's gonna be a bit of a fiddly job let's get on the battery is now back in place it is the time that we secure all the cables the cooling compressor so quite a bit of other ancillaries before we can lower the car and carry on our diagnostics from the information i've got at the moment it looks like my the problem might still be digital whereby have to do a reset with uh, PeeWee's software, which is the Porsche official software, uh, to clear the crash data. Let's see if that's the case, but until then, we have to secure everything here.
fast forward a little bit. Today's Monday and yesterday was Sunday and I couldn't um, sit knowing that I'm so close and we need to finish the force. So we put the battery back on. Obviously there was still an issue, so we sealed the battery, but that, that, that wasn't the fix. Now I looked more into it and realized the fix was in the software. So, uh, and this is a very good tip for a Porsche Panamera. If the car gets involved in an accident, there are kind of four bit of software that has to be applied on control units to reset the crash data and one pyrofuse. Well, it's not a bad, bad thing that we've taken the battery out because we sealed the cover, but the problem was that, and you know, sometimes you get technical information we they don't really match. It is a pyrofuse apparently, but that's on the full electric, not on the uh, hybrid as it is the case. Less I learn sometimes. Um, it's the hard way, the way that it was um, in this case, but the Porsche is done. We had to use the, what we have in this bag is the uh, Porsche official um, uh, tool, uh, the laptop with the software and the interface. And now it's done. And for the first time in quite a bit, we are going to move the Panamera on its own because we finally have ready coming on and can also engage gear And also drive by far by far was not an easy job and you know most of the time with with cars so much technology the jobs are not straightforward as much as you like and um, especially if it's a new model that uh, hasn't been done and then you don't have the right technical information you end up spending more time but most important is that we fix the car and now it's on its way to the body shop to have all the body work done and uh, the airbag. We're not gonna do that here um, because this, the car belongs to one of our partners uh, that they um, do body work. So, uh, but our bit it was to get the Porsche up and running. Now, as we do on each video, we want to get a conclusion, obviously technical one, it was what has to be done when a crash happens on the Panamera. This is the generation two, uh, pretty straightforward now. <laughs> so hopefully it will save someone a lot of time um, in a future situation. And secondly, to say what would have to, we have charged the customer. So for all the work that we did, which was quite comprehensive um, obviously we also done a full update on the car uh, there were many modules that they were out of date we reset the crash data on um, several components we had a bit of hiccups uh, during programming replace the fire fuse which is uh, one a big element for which it was a bit of a hiccup but anyway for all this we've charged a thousand pounds that's plus VAT and uh, in parts we did not really have anything apart from this fuse and the software so this was the job with the porsche panamera that was not running uh, from a side crash into the passenger door just because of that quite a few airbags have been deployed and crash data has been set in several control units so if you like the video don't forget to like it subscribe to it leave me a comment tell me what you think is um, is interesting what you'd like to see more why not and stay close for most more videos with interesting repairs translated in videos hopefully hopeful ones i'll see you next time